What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today I wanted to make a video about a species that I've never actually shown on this channel yet. And that's because I still actually haven't gotten around to growing them. And that species comes from Natal, South Africa. And I'm sure you guys sort of know what species I'm talking about right now. It's very, very similar to core lovers. Um, now, some say that it's not a separate species. I don't want to get into that. I just want to talk about sclerotia and the question of does this species produce sclerotia? Uh, because I think it's a little known fact that this species actually does produce sclerotia. Speaking of which, if you guys remember a couple of days ago, I made a community post asking you guys what this thing in the picture was. And a lot of you guys correctly guessed sclerotia slash truffle, right? but you guys didn't get the species because I would automatically assume that you're talking about Florida grass lovers in terms of sclerotia because that's what I've shown so far, but this is actually a natty sclerotia. In fact, you will see this exact sclerotia in this video. Now, although they seem, you know, fairly, fairly similar, very similar, and, and they are very related to court lovers, right? Uh, they are still different enough that they produce sclerotia. And as we know, core lovers do not produce sclerotia. So right here, I have a tub of that species that failed, right? It was dirty spawn, but I spawned it anyways because it was the only bit of germination I was able to get from the swab. And well, it got triked out, okay? Lots of trike. I'm actually covering it there. I'm not gonna open up the danger zone. That's like Chernobyl over there. And I'm just going to basically sort of try to dig these guys out, these stones right here. Okay, and in addition to that, I'm also gonna be showing you guys how the top fruiting bacterial dirty spawn jars are doing. And I'll tell you guys this, they're not doing very well. So it's sort of like a state of the contam, I guess you could say, plus natty stones. All right, so let's get digging into this tub. Now, in the bottom, you will see a ton of stones as well coming in. So I will try to dig those guys out as well. And oh, there's a little bit of trike right there. The trike is spreading like crazy. I was supposed to make this video ages ago. So I'm gonna start digging in with one hand. Hopefully I could get it right. Okay, let's see if we got some stones in here. Whoa. Okay, it actually is kind of hard. I checked out what that was and it wasn't a stone, unfortunately, but we will keep digging. It was a pretty small piece and there are some bigger pieces in here. So let's see if we can find anything. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna be fairly rough with these guys. I feel, yeah, it does feel like sclerotia here. It's pretty hard. This this little thing is very hard right there. I don't know if it's sclerotia exactly. Some parts are actually sclerotia-like. Like this right here. It's harder than the surrounding substrate. Right there, yeah. So here is the sclerotia-like thing. It's actually harder. I'm just gonna sort of take away all the sort of extra substrate and stuff. This could actually very well be sclerotia. We're sort of beginning the formation of uh, sclerotia. There's some grain stuck in here, the here and there, which is normal, you know, with the Mexican grass lovers and especially the Florida grass lovers, uh, that's fairly normal. But this is actually sort of its own thing. I don't think it's the best example of a sclerotia, but then again, this guy I spawned on the 16th of March, so it hasn't been all that long either. So if, if you know, this guy didn't trike out and kept producing for longer, then I feel like we could get some bigger sclerotia, but this indeed does seem to be sclerotia. There's some green there, but like this part and that part does look very, very sclerotia-like. Let's keep digging and see what we can find. Okay, there's some right here. Let's take a look. See, this is the regular substrate. Very easy to break apart, right? Looks like normal old substrate with core and mycelium and grain. And then here we have the sclerotia-like thing. I can tell you right now, just touching it, it's harder. This part's fairly hard. 
So, wow, this is a, uh, see this right here, it's getting, it is actually getting harder. This part though is the hardest. I don't really want to break it apart. There's some grains here and there, but there's, de this is definitely different from the surrounding substrate. You know what, I'm just going to crack it. Like this white part here, very hard. This is very, very sclerotial like this. This, this is definitely a sclerotia. I will say though, this is definitely a bit more of a pain to clean than um, Florida grass lover sclerotia. And it is actually like harder. It feels harder. Definitely feels harder. Look at that. And the color is different. Really cool. So why is it that these guys produce sclerotia? Well, they're so similar to coral lovers, right? But, uh, there's, there's some big di differences. Um, now, if you guys have seen a lot of my earlier uh, sclerotia videos with the Florida grass lovers and the Mexican grass lovers, then you may real you may remember that I always say that uh, they produce sclerotia as a as a defense mechanism for natural disasters like floods, you know, fires, things like that. And I've also stated that oftentimes, at least for me. At least the major sclerotia producers that I'm aware of and that we use in this hobby for sclerotia production in particular are species that I lump as grass lovers. And it's not like a very technical term, it's just a term I use in this channel to encompass everything that doesn't grow directly on wood or wood chips or anything wood related, nor is it anything that grows on dung patty, right? Like poo lovers and core lovers. These guys are actually grass lovers. These guys were not discovered on dung. They do not grow on dung generally in the wild. They actually grow on dung enriched soil. Now, I don't know if they can actually grow directly on dung. I wouldn't be surprised if they can, but generally the times that they've been discovered have been not on dung, like core lovers. So that's why uh, they produce sclerotia. And here we are again. Listen to this. Hear that? Solid. All right guys, so the next thing that I wanna show you guys are the top fruiting jars. Fortunately, those are not doing too well. I will be right back. I am back and here we have the top fruiting experiments. So unfortunately guys, if you guys remember, these are the starry nights. Um, I put the core on here on February 3rd. So two months ago, over two months ago now. And as you can see, unfortunately, they're not doing too well. I have basically been neglecting these guys for the last few weeks, not even watering, not even misting. I've, I've basically given up on these guys. I'm just keeping it around just to see what happens. And well, you guys can see what's been happening. This right here is actually a jar I kept as a control. Same genetics, same batch and everything, but I just didn't case this guy. Um, I have opened this guy, but I did not case this guy. So we will look at that after we take a look at these guys. So let's see. Uh, for those of you who don't know, top rooting is a good method of basically trying to, of salvaging bacterial spawn and getting some fruits from it. You're gonna have a higher chance of getting fruits from it because you're not gonna be breaking apart the mycelium because then once you break apart the mycelium, then it's gonna have to recover from that, right? And those are the times when things like trike can get a hold, when the mycelium is weakened, right? But in this state, it's very powerful, it's consolidated, well, powerful in comparison, you know, not as powerful as non-contaminated spawn, but you get what I mean. Uh, so this is a safe way, or I should say a safer way of trying to salvage a grow like that. So I just basically put a bunch of core on top, as you can see, and they have well colonized the core quite a long time ago. So let's open this up and take a look at the surface conditions. It's been, um, this is my first time looking at it guys for since weeks, but uh, yeah. So nothing really going on, right? No fruits, no, no primordia, no high fold knots, nothing. All of them basically they sort of look like that. Let's look at this one. those that doesn't look like trike it's too circular to be trike hopefully hopefully that's some good news hopefully we have some primordia as i should say hyphal knots but uh you know i'm not gonna get my hopes up too much i might uh, give this guy a chance so very nice and over here the last one okay i see no such thing nothing that seems like what we just saw in that other top. Let me take. Smells kind of um, 
smells uh, suspicious. Almost moldy, I must say. So, okay, so now let's look at how messed up these guys are. So these guys are basically had embedded bacteria, right? Um, I think I think these guys actually starred in uh, Do You Have Clean Spawn, that video. As you can see, there is actually water pooling up on the bottom. And you can see the, the mycelium is actually constricting, right? And then the water is coming out. So it's sort of like expelling this water. This water is not from misting, guys. I haven't misted this guy in ages. The last time I found this water, I thought it was misting. I drained it out and I did a mist and I just left it and then more water came out. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty nasty. But it's still going, I guess you could say. <laughs> so here's the other one. And I, as I've said many times, uh, bacterial spawn can do, um, bacterial mycelium can do all sorts of weird things. They could look weird ways. Like you see, that almost looks like sclerotia. And I've heard over the years, a lot of people say, oh, what kind of uh, coral lover produces sclerotia? And the answer is always none of them. Coral lovers do not produce sclerotia. You need a different species for that. Um, I, still, I still see that a lot. And over here, you can see this is some sketchy stuff. Very sketchy stuff. Do not like that at all. Kind of almost look like looks like an abstract painting. So yeah, this is the gnarliest jar for sure, for sure. And here we are on the last one. Now look at that. That sort of looks cool. Almost looks like sclerotia again. We got a bunch of uh, riser growth coming out here. Interestingly enough, they're sort of colonizing over each other, over and over again. So this one is not as constricted as the other ones. So, and now finally to the control. Now the control is barely constricted at all, but there's this weird valley, he, valley here um, that you can see. It's not, there's not much mycelium going on there, just in this one area. Again, sclerotia-like. And here's another valley right there. So yeah, sort of looking like that. Pretty crazy looking. And over here we have the hardcore metabolites. Look at that, guys. And this thing is like black. At least it used to be blacker, but now it's actually becoming a lighter, like becoming amber now. So yeah, I don't know why I'm still keeping them around, but I guess, you know, we'll see what happens. Why not? As long as they're not, you know, molding, at least they might be molding, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, might as well keep them around just to see what happens, right? So anyways, guys, that's the video. Oh, and the poo lovers are doing better than my wildest expectations, guys. It just happened all of a sudden. They're, they're actually my most successful grow going on right now. Literally, it's a, it's a canopy, guys. It's a canopy, and it's like on the third flush now. I'm harvesting at it every day. Next morning I wake up, there's tons more. I mean, these guys are crazy vigorous, guys. I cannot be any happier than I am right now and uh, got some new Mexican grass lover pins. The problem with the Mexican grass lovers is now, you know, before I wasn't getting pins, now I actually am getting pins. But the thing is they either stall or they abort. And same conditions as the poo lovers and the poo lovers are thriving. Now, since filming this video, both of those Mexican grass lover shoe boxes got trichoderma on the same day, which leads me to believe that there is actually, it's just because of dirty spawn. And you know, the way it grew on agar plates, some, some plates it grew a little bit weird. So I'd always suspected, but I'm actually gonna go back now to spore. Actually yesterday I did. So then I will see how it goes. But I do have a bowl grow of those guys going and they are doing beautifully. So, you know, before I was talking about how RH is probably the, the main issue that I had. Now I'm thinking it's not the RH. They, there is enough RH inside the shoe boxes, which is shown by the success with the poo lovers. They, it's like literally a canopy, right? So uh, there's some things that I need to consider there and trying to get to the bottom of it. I think ultimately though, the best way would be sort of like what I did with the poo lovers, just start new culture and try from there. I'm just really, really uh, stingy with my spores because I've only got one print of each. So I really don't want to go back to spore if possible, but sometimes it's the, uh, it's the best way to get results. And hopefully it'll be saving time and spores in the end by going back to spore once or twice again. So anyways, guys, that's the video for today. And here is one last shot of Natalie's balls. Hope you guys have a great day or night. Michael File Sage, 
check it out for now.